Hello everybody, my name is Mario Arancia. I'm a brand strategist at Manufacturer where we help high-performing real estate companies to discover what they need to do so they can attract quality clients and agents to scale their business. Now, today I'm here making some content for you guys based off, you know, me just looking at some real estate brands and under looking at them and just like admiring what they do and see that they're setting a very, very high standard in their industry. So I'm, I'm going to call this series um, Raising the Bar in Real Estate Brands. And that's exactly what they're doing. They're raising the bar through their online presence, through their design, through their photography, whatever it is, you know, they're setting a standard for what the industry should look like. So I'm going to go for a few of these and they're going to be at least 30 minutes or perhaps, you know, 20 minutes, who knows how long they take. But I'm basically going through and doing sort of a sort of a brand audit through their online presence and through all the stuff. I'm not giving any critiques. I'm not giving any, um, yeah, I'm not giving any critiques. I am just showing, you know, what they're doing right. And, you know, maybe anybody who is, you know, uh, yeah, a real estate brokerage or property management company or whatever it is that you are in real estate, you know, if you're a real estate company and you're looking to get into this whole branding thing, you know, I think it'd be really helpful to see what other people are doing in your industry so that you can also have an understanding yourself of what works right now in the industry. So first up is Missing Nam. And Missing Nam, I've actually followed their account for quite a while. Uh, this year and it's they are really really good on social media really good on social media But let's just check out their online presence as it is So first off you can come to their website and their website You can look for here very nice imagery clear cut and what you can see is is that there's actually a link to a YouTube video at the front page Oh YouTube video at the front page, which is... I'm an adult, and adults have to buy houses, but I can't go looking for houses well, alone. Buzz Quinta, do you want to go house shopping with me? Nothing. I mean, do you see uh, BuzzFeed, even though like, I'm, I'm not much of a fan of BuzzFeed myself, but given the cultural significance of what BuzzFeed does stand for, it is a very, very important part of kind of getting, getting your kind of your foot in the door there, even though it was just for like, would make me freaking him over. You pick it up and then you pour it in. Sells it. Look at this big old in the hills. That okay. seems, all things considered, for LA, pretty normal. This has been so wonderful, especially this home that I do not know what to expect with the third home. It's actually in Malibu, which is quite a ways away. So yeah. we're gonna take a look at tomorrow. We have it primed and ready. Okay, so cool. This is very good because again, the cultural significance of BuzzFeed is very important, especially with the millennial crowd. I mean, I hate using the word millennial, but it just makes sense, right? The word, it's, it's just people who are online all the time, who want quick, quick content, um, you know, very, very low attention spans, whatnot. I mean, that's the stereotype, but it's, it's true to some degree. It's true to some degree. People's attention spans are getting, you know, slower and slower. And BuzzFeed is like, again, it's BuzzFeed. It's just, you know, quick videos about things and whatnot, about different things in pop culture. And in this part, it was about, you know, lifestyles and houses. And you can see that their names are in the description here, Missing Nam, their address, everything. So this is actually really good that they actually have. Uh, a video connected to BuzzFeed and that gives them some very cultural significance if people just are scrolling by BuzzFeed so happen and they see this and they are looking for a house you know in the whatever it is right if they are looking for a house then they get actually get to to even contact them because all the content information is here the websites here everything's good so this is a really really good so it I guess the lesson you can take from this is that you know find people who are influencing your clients, you know, the clients that you want and who you want to work with, right? So, you know, who knows, maybe you are working with uh, military home families or, you know, luxury condo people, whatever, I don't know. And, you know, they only listen to a certain type of person talk about a certain type of topic. If you can get on there, and you know, do like an interview or something, you know, give value to their audience or whatnot, then this is basically one example of what Missing Nam is doing, and you could do that as well. 
So moving on to their for their website again. So yeah, very good, nice pictures. Uh, you go for the gallery. Oh. Okay, this is interesting. So they actually have their Instagram account connected to their website. Don't know who made that decision, but that was a really good decision on their part because you can just go right. What is up, guys? This is Eric and Phil from yep. Missing Nom Beards and Blazers. Especially if you're on your phone, this is like quick, easy. You know, you're you're into you're actually integrating your website and your social media together very very easily very very easily and so you know ease of access for your audience to get to one place to another so very good let's go to the about page missing occupies of award winning yes yeah, so they're very well known very well boasting 20 years of combined experience in business and real estate yes okay cool knowledge passion commitment always listen to first aim for long-term relationships, you know, share passion for architecture, combine them. So yeah, you see, here's their uh, USP, um, what their, you know, unique selling point, shared passion for architecture, business, LA life. So I think there could be some notion that that could be for those type of people who live there. Um, de demographic speaking, combined with carefully network of top-notch resources, finally hold negoti negotiation skills, blah, blah, blah. Uh -huh. And then they even list their, their target audience here. Very good. You see here, this is, I mean, it's a bit broad, but honestly, it works. I mean, if it works for them, it doesn't really matter, right, what I'm saying. So from first-time home buyers to first-time buyers to seasoned investors, young professionals, global CEOs, entertainment celebrities, prominent sports figures. Wow. They've worked with a lot of people, you know, so they don't really niche by industry. They niche by uh lifestyle, personality, whatever it may be. And that's working for them right now. So that's another option, right? You don't need to always niche within just, yeah, you don't even just need to niche within just um, a, a, a vertical, or just a, a, a industry, a niche industry. You can actually, you know, do horizontal, meaning you can work with all these people, but then you have specified like personalities, you know, people that you work with, you know, what are their values, what do they, yeah, what do they like, everything like that, right? So as a person instead of an industry, so to say. So yeah, so they say here, okay, pretty good. Father, two boys, former kids. So yeah, it's very personal, very personal. There's, the messaging isn't complicated. It's not supposed to be too clever, whatever it is. It just shows what they are, you know? It is what it is, right? And that's that's a good thing about missing them. They just show it is what it is, right? You know, I'm this, I'm that, I'm a former motorcycle enthusiast turned design-minded, soccer dad, you know, all this stuff. They, they embrace their individuality, which is really, really good. So they have the contact form here. Yeah, pretty good overall. And, oh, here they have a podcast. Podcast, I didn't notice this before. All right, what is up, guys? Uh, Beers and Blazers podcast number two, I guess, right? Two or three. It's another podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, we want to kind of... Uh, kind of bounce off our last uh, podcast, which we covered our hashtags, keep moving and own it. Yep. Uh, so if you guys want to go check that out, scroll back. Um, and this time we want to lead more. In yeah. So this is really good as well, because you can see, I think if I'm not mistaken, what they're doing right here is that they've actually taken their Instagram thing. Well, because again, uh, another thing we had to get to before, I guess I explained that part is that they started a vlog. And I really like their vlog because it's just, just, it's again, it's like document, it's almost documentary in nature. It's just like showing, you know, the day in the life of someone hey guys, of, of, of working at their company or whatever. Phil Missig with Missig Nam, just sitting here waiting for my uh, right. appointment. So they don't show, obviously, the deals. They don't show, obviously, the, 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 the nitty gritty, but it, it doesn't really matter. It's all about, you know, getting to know them and what they're doing and their lifestyle and whatnot. And it's just pretty honest. It works very well for them. I mean, you can see What's up, guys? 203 views. That's not bad. It's really good. You know, they, they actually have, and they are, and they are, they have their own hashtag too as well. They actually have two hashtags, own hashtags. They have missing nom and then they have beards and blazers, which let's check. Um, beards and, yeah, uh, well, 
do you see, they, you see here, and this is another good thing that they're doing, is that they're basically owning the hashtag Beards and Blazers and Missing Nom, those two. So when you create your own hashtag, you're creating basically your own little environment where you can um, get those people that are looking for what your service is, so to say. And you have basically have the whole control of the conversation. Uh, people can see, you know, oh, this, this, and this, and that, and you have complete control of their attention and whatnot. So they see you, you know, as the so-called, you know, authority in this sort of space. So when you control a conversation, nobody else can, and you, you are the only one that is comes to their mind. So do you get that mental real estate uh, that basically the, their your brand is going into their mind, into your mind. Into, uh, not into the customer's mind sorry into the customer's mind yeah so you can see here they own it pretty much so if you go down here and and also if you follow the hashtag you're always going to get this because for the most part there's not much here like again they own the hashtag there's not much here so this is really good because people who are looking at perhaps this they want to follow when the next one's going to come out on the Instagram post, they just follow the hashtag, it comes up on their feed immediately. So instant instant uh, omnipresence, I would say, which is really good. Yeah, so that's good because also they've turned that into a podcast, basically. Which, I don't know if it's different than what they're doing here, because I haven't seen their podcast, and I'm actually probably going to listen to it, because it sounds really interesting. Alright, we're live. You know? Keep coming back. <laughs> the fact that they're using different mediums as well, um, not just relying on Instagram or YouTube or whatever it is, they, they're actually using different forms of mediums. And voice is really popular nowadays, you know. Audiobooks, yeah, audiobooks, podcasts. I mean, people are just driving, you know, you never know. I mean, I don't know if you, what type of clients you could work with, but most people who are pretty, you know, business oriented or have a lot of things to do or just put on, I put on just headphones and whatnot and I listen, you know, all, all the way to, you know, if I'm going somewhere like on a business meeting or I'm on a train or whatever, you know, podcasts are really good and you're, you're, and you're building that, uh, you're building that consistency with your audience just by making these different types of things because now you don't need to. Now you 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 now you don't need to just say, oh, I only have the video. Oh, I only have this, so you can only watch my video, right? So there's more to it now. You can actually say, oh, I can watch. Oh, I don't need to watch the video. I can watch the podcast. Oh, I don't need to watch the the podcast. I can watch the video. Oh, you know, you can even go further. Oh, I don't even need to watch the podcast. I can watch the the po uh, the blog post. You know, and that would be a form of content stacking, where you're taking a piece of content. And you're seeing what other parts, other, how you can break it up, basically, right? And that's exactly what they're doing here, is they're breaking it up. And they're putting it in different mediums and different platforms for their audience, which is really, really, really good. Yeah. So, yeah, going down their Instagram feed, it's really, it's, it's consistent. Uh, they're, yeah, showing different parts of their lives, really good photography. And yeah, look, they're also showing their listings on here as well. You can see here. I haven't been doing that recently, but you know, uh, you can see in the, I believe here, yeah, January 3rd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, so they've already been, so they post a lot of things. There's a variation, which is good. There's a variation, but there is, I'd say there was a more consistent theme going up here with the beards and blazers and, um, yeah. But overall, it's it's a really, really, really good Instagram account. Um, they're using Instagram Stories as well, using polls. Very well done. Yep, and they have a hashtag. Perfect. Yeah. So they seem to have everything. Or where does this YouTube account lead to? Ninety-eight million oh six hundred thousand. Uh, I don't know. This is the Buzzfeed one. Okay. I don't know if they have a YouTube channel. Oh wait, they do have a YouTube channel. I did see that they have a YouTube channel, and that's where they uh, 
They only have one subscriber on here, which is not bad. I mean, they just started the YouTube channel. It's not a big deal. Um, their content is going to follow them through for the next few months, and they're going to probably see amazing results from that. You know, so they're, whatever their marketing team that they work with or what they did in-house, they really did a good job on suggesting this idea. A really, really good idea. Really good idea. So yeah, that's not much I could say. Uh, they, only, they also have a Facebook page. Facebook page is pretty good. Pretty good engagement, I would say. Let's see here. Yeah, there's engagement. There's engagement. It's moderate. It's not, it's not that bad. It's good engagement for what it is, right? They even use hashtags on Facebook, too. They have an instant messaging system pop up here, which is good. Just, it's all about, at the end of the day, it's all about ease of access, right? Branding is about, you know, creating ease of access for your customers to get to you so they can just buy whatever it is that you're selling. So you use that through all your platforms, you know, and you, you use that as an integrated system so that everything works together to create it. So everything, it's not separate, it's all together. So you can see here, it's all together. You know, we have our YouTube channel, we have our YouTube appearances, um, we have our podcast. It's also the same thing as the Beers and Blazers. We have a da, da, da. So it's all connected so that it all leads towards, you know, inbound leads, which is really what you're getting from uh, branding. Quality inbound leads who are looking for your services and love the value that you're providing online. Um, so yeah, that's about it. I think the only thing now I have to say is uh, about the design part, right? The design part. Being a designer myself, I love looking at the design. Uh, of So the website itself is really good. Um, again, they don't need much to... They let the content carry them, which is an interesting strategy. I kind of like that. Um, their design is just simple, very nice and modern, minimalistic. You know, very Bauhaus. No, it's functional. Form follows function. Sorry, that, that always messes me up. Yeah, form follows function. That's what this is, right? So, it's just really easy to navigate. There's not much bells and whistles. You don't need to go through a whole sales page. There's, there's no click funnels here. It's just moving on the content and you have um, a form here, an application form, and that's it. So, yeah, pretty good overall. Um, Design is really well done. Photography is really well done. I don't have much to say anymore on this. This was a really, really good real estate brand. And obviously, they, they have other things involved in this, right? You know, not just their, their outward appearance, basically, what they're showing, right? This is the uh, external branding, so to say. They have, sure, I'm sure they have a lot of internal branding which is, yeah, internal branding, which is the company culture, um, their value systems, everything, you know, the, the why, the why behind so, so, many, so much of their, what they do, you know. So there's a lot, you know, that I'm, I'm not seeing that, you know, is, is also behind all their decisions, right? And as always, branding starts internally, not externally, so. You know, that's why they're able to create so much amazing content and show themselves in a very, very, very good way because they already have their purpose on lockdown. They know what they're doing. They know why they built this business. They know why they built this real estate brokerage business for themselves. And that's why they're able to create so much great content and put a powerful, powerful brand presence online. So yeah, all good things with Missing Nam. I really like what you're doing, guys. I really, really like it. You know, Phil, Eric, you guys are doing an amazing job. Shout outs to you. I follow on your Instagram for a while, and you're doing really good stuff. So, yeah, that's the first episode for raising the bar in real estate brands.